Welcome to the Johnson Supply review of A2L product and application. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys today. Uh, I do want to state this re video no way replaces the installation manuals or the class if you have an opportunity. Uh, please refer to the, your manuals for the proper installation. Some items worth noting, the CAPTA or the CAPFA both have a more robust pan. A sensor located in the bottom right by the condensate drain with the extended wire and a small hole in the front panel with a knockout with a grommet to run the wire to the device. Although units have an external static pressure rating of 0.5 inches water column, the sensor has been tested up to 0.66 inches water column. The new accessories when using the R32 equipment include an R32 accessory kit for the non-A2O furnace to adapt to the R32 coil and the R32 zoning accessory when using a R32 system. We will be discussing both of those items. Our coils have the same connections they always have, a 3 ace and a 3 quarter or 7 ace, mattering on the BTU. When using a lower sear unit in the north region of the U.S., we can still use a piston. And when you do use a CAPFA3 or CAUFA3 and apply a piston, you cannot remove the piston and add a TXV at this time. Uh, with using the coil and outdoor volume to set the indoor square foot, more important than ever that the unit be an AHRI match. A uh, quick added note we have on here is the LAKT01 low ambient kit can be used on our A2L units, just not on anything with an ECM motor in the outdoor condenser. Pretty standard housekeeping items prior to beginning your work on systems containing flammable refrigerants. Safety checks are necessary to ensure the risk of ignition is minimized. Ensure your leak detection equipment being used is suitable for A2R refrigerants and is intrinsically safe. And have a dry powder CO2 fire extinguisher adjacent to the charging area. When opening a system, you should have a degree of ventilation or at least air movement. Ventilation should be provided and such if a leak refrigerant will disperse, preferably expelled externally to the atmosphere. All our equipment should have a dedicated ground from the equipment being serviced back to the electrical panel. Non-inverter systems are using PoE oil. The same precautions must be taken on the A2L as we did with previous equipment. Our line set charges have not changed. If you carefully view, we still allow quarter inch liquid line below 25 feet on the one and a half, two, and two and a half ton units. With the greatly reduced charge now with the R32, charging a system is more charge critical than ever. We'll need to know the liquid line as well as the suction line to calculate the added refrigerant per foot. The chart appears in all the installation manuals. Please be sure to fill out the refrigerant charge label located on the lower access panel of the condensing unit. No change to our equipment or line set lengths under 79 feet. We do not require a trap as long as you use the proper line set sizes. A trap may be required when exceeding 79 feet. Please refer to the latest revision of long line set application for R32. When the evaporation coil is above the condenser, an inverted loop located on the suction line should be used in order to keep the liquid refrigerant inside the evaporation coil on an off cycle and not migrate to the outdoor condensing unit compressor. Using existing line sets, please drain as much residual oil out of the existing system line sets and traps. Pay close attention to low areas where oil may collect. Charge should always be checked using superheat when a piston is used and subcooling when using TXV equipped indoor coil to verify the proper charge. However, subcooling should be taken and recorded along with superheat on every call. Quick note on the service valves if you see a brass cap, that means they're front seat valves. They'll seal entirely when front seated. When back seated, they may not seal 100%. 
and the seal is made by the brass cap. The cap should be tightened finger tight and an additional sixth of a turn with a flat wrench. A service valve with a plastic cap will front seat and back seat both and the cap is not required to make a good seal. Again, when connecting this equipment, all of the uh, indoor units have a total external static pressure of 0.5 inches water column or less. Superheat adjustment should not be made until indoor ambient conditions have stabilized that could take up to 24 hours. Units matched with indoor coils equipped with a non-adjustable TXV should be charged by subcool only. Our system superheat targets for matching pistons has not changed from the R410A systems. Note for two stage models, the unit will need to be charged at low stage. TXV based systems normally will have a subcool value of 8 degrees plus or minus 1. Certain models or tonnages may have an exception. Please note the installation manual. Please note the manuals are coming with an additional superheat at compressor reading, and we'll go over more of those in the actual instruction in the classroom. All right, when working or servicing an outdoor unit, please note the power must be supplied to the outdoor unit containing ECM motors before the indoor unit. So when working on this piece of equipment and making adjustments and removing the disconnect, you should always power to the outdoor unit the label will be affixed on the front of every coil. The charge amount used to estimate needed service area is based on the largest condenser used on that coil with the longest line set. A multiplier is used to determine the final needed square feet of service area by the equipment. That's the area the duct will actually serve with the air. The square feet listed on the coil times the multiplier will give you the narrated square feet of service area for that piece of equipment. Please note that is not the utility room. That is the actual air communicated through the system in the home. The first view of the Dragonfly, please note toward the top we'll have a red LED and we'll have the push button. The push button is used for test purposes and it requires two pushes in a five second period. We'll have the sensor connection, we'll have the thermostat connection along with the outdoor equipment, and last we'll have the indoor equipment connection. We also have alarm dry contact and 24 volt output which would run to a zoning panel or a accessory control. The non-two-way furnace integration kit was designed to support HVAC replacement market for systems containing a furnace, indoor coil, and an outdoor air conditioner or heat pump, or a modular blower, indoor coil, outdoor air conditioner or heat pump. If either indoor coil or outdoor is replaced, both must be upgraded to R32 models. The furnace or the modular blower is still operational, it will not need to be replaced. The Dragonfly should never be physically mounted anywhere on the case coil or the furnace. It can be mounted to a wall near the unit, a wooden beam, or even on the furnace return duct or other location deemed acceptable. When the R32 concentration is above a certain level or the 32 sensor or integration kit encounters a fault in the kit, it will energize the G terminal and the indoor unit by sending 24 volt signal. It also disconnects the R signal from the thermostat or climatoc, disabling the outdoor equipment. Attention, after the connection of the A2L sensor and the non-A2L integration kit, ensure the A2L sensor is kept in its original location in the cabinet and correctly mounted to the sensor bracket. Important, if the sensor is not connected before powering up, the system will enter a mitigation mode and it may stay in that mode for five minutes, even if recycling power. The indoor blower may run temporarily after the power is applied to the system. It will turn off automatically. Test all modes of operation with the system to make sure they are functioning properly before installing the non-A2L furnace integration kit. Mandatory for successful safe install, you must verify leak mitigation kit, depending on the systems below. When running the test with the mitigation kit, set the thermostat to one of the operating modes. 
pushed a button twice in a five second period. The red LED will start to flash rapidly during the five minute period. Assure the outdoor unit has stopped operation as well as the blower is operating. Perform the control R32 leakage test for all the modes one by one. Cooling, heating, emergency heating, constant fan, and idle. Note, if an R32 leak is detected, the non-A2L furnace kit will automatically enter mitigation mode. It provides the same performance as seen during the test mode. The non-A2L furnace integration kit will ensure all HVAC system functionality, heating and cooling, is off and the indoor blower is operational. After the R32 sensor no longer detects refrigerant, the system will remain in mitigation mode for additional five minutes. This is one example of wiring the integration control with a gas furnace and an air conditioner or heat pump. Please note, you must look through the install manual and find the schematic that most closely applies to your application. Please note the outdoor equipment is connected to the thermostat connection and not to the furnace connection. I added one more schematic to this example because I thought it was worth noting. On communicating systems, the 1 and 2 from the thermostat will connect to the thermostat connection, EEV control, and the outdoor unit. The R and C from the EEV control and the communicating thermostat will connect to the R and C and stay powered up during the mitigation mode. We do have A2L ready furnaces available for shipping. If you receive an A2L furnace and you're using a standard air conditioner, non-A2L, you can disable that function. When connecting the sensor from the evaporation coil, it will connect on the control board left hand side. When the sensor is present, the board will have an illuminated green LED and when not seeing the sensor, it will be out. Our standard push button system is used. In order to disable the function, you would go into the A2L function enable and change it from yes to no. The equipment does ship in the A2L ready function. Failure to disable it will go into mitigation mode. If you have an R32 system, you must leave the A2L function enabled. The green LED located next to the sensor connection will indicate if there's a COM issue with the R32 sensor. The LED off signifies no signal with the sensor. The furnace control monitors the R32 sensor one time per second. Mitigation mode with an A2L ready furnace. The display's A2L leakage error, EAL, on the board shuts down the gas operation, energizes the optional ventilation and alarm output contacts, and runs the CFM at maximum airflow. After five minutes' time, if there's no other alarm or faults, the control will de energize the optional ventilation alarm outputs and go back to the original operating mode per thermostat signal. To verify your mitigation mode, you will go to A2U and change from no to yes. Once selecting yes, it will display EAL, shut down the gas, energize the alarm outputs, and run the CFM maximum airflow. There are no mitigation kits available for the air handling units. The coil will be an R32 coil, so it will ship A2L ready. They cannot be disabled. Note, although electric heat cannot ignite an R32 or A2L refrigerant, it will switch off the electric heat elements and turn the blower on during mitigation mode. Pictured as the A2L board inside an air handler, note the standard low voltage wiring connections. The operation and error codes on the air handler units are identical to the Dragonfly interface. When using zoning, we need to ensure all zone dampers remain open and install accessories are powered down during a leak alarm. Once the leak is resolved, it will restore power to the accessories and close the dampers. Please note labor on the board 
Connect zone damper wires from zone control will appear at the bottom of the board. Connect damper wires to this side appears at the top of the board. Located on the left will be the alarm input, quarter inch spade terminal, and the common quarter inch spade terminal. A tool accessory zoning controls designed to support R32 refrigerant installations that use electronic accessories such as zoning, air cleaners, UV lamps, humidifiers, or dehumidifiers. The zoning kit will ship with 10 feet of red 18 gauge wire, 10 feet of blue 18 gauge wire, and four 10 foot black 18 gauge wire. Also four white 18 gauge wire for connection to dampers. Mounting hardware in the PCB enclosure with the zone control. The kit should never be physically mounted anywhere on the unit. The kit can be mounted to a wall near the unit, wooden beam on the furnace return duct, or any other location deemed acceptable. The kit can be mounted using wall anchors and screws provided in the kit. There are three green LEDs, one for the unit power, two for accessories being powered, and one red LED that will illuminate during the alarm mode. Now this is a basic schematic. Please refer to the install manual for which installation applies best to your application. As always, we appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Please contact us at the Cafferty Group for any more information or if you have any questions. Thank you.